In this video, I'm going to introduce the SQL from clause, um, which uh, together with the, the select clause is really the, the foundation of, of the SQL query. Um, and uh, almost every query that you encounter uh, outside of those, those kind of calculations that we showed uh, when we introduced the select clause, that your query is always going to have a from clause, which ultimately tells SQL um, this is where this is where to go, you know, to fetch the, the elements that I'm that I'm requesting. Um, so diving into the PowerPoint. Um, you'll see up in the top right, this is kind of the query that I've, I've been sharing to introduce the, 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 the SQL query itself and various clauses. Uh, so just talking through that, um, we have our, our select clause uh, and, we're, and there are certain elements in the select list that we're requesting from SQL. And then this from, this from line here, this ultimately tells SQL where to go, uh, which table to use. Uh, in order to find uh, and return the elements in the select list. And so the from clause um, is, is basically always going to follow the select clause. I mean, there are, there are other things you can introduce in between them, but the, in general, when you're, when you're running a query to just return uh, elements from a select clause, um, the from clause is going to appear immediately after it. Um, and it gives essentially uh, SQL the, the, the table source or the table reference for uh, the elements in the select list. And so in this particular example in the top right, um, we have from AdventureWorks 2017. Uh, person, address, this whole, uh, this whole portion of code that follows the from uh, keyword is your table source. And so it, it provides uh, SQL with, with various levels of information. Um, I'm going to skip over the first one. Uh, it, it, this does ultimately have a default server connected to it. Um, this this reference does, and that's ultimately going to be the the server to which you're currently connected. Um, and for all the examples that I use in this in this course, I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to point out. You know, I'm not going to ever include a server name uh, in in the table source, um, and it will. I'll talk a little bit more detail about that in a second, uh, but ultimately your your table source is going to have uh, primarily three three elements. One is the database reference or the database name uh, that contains the table. Uh, so in this particular example up here, AdventureWorks 2017 is your database. Um, then it's also going to contain a schema, and so uh, within a database, uh, the it, a database typically has one or more schemas. Um, and so, in this particular uh, in this particular uh, table source, we're we're going to the person schema, the schema named person, um, and then ultimately there is your table reference, which is the the the, the table that is used uh, for that select clause. And so, in this particular case, address is your table uh, your table reference. And so, uh, you know, showing that a, a little more explicitly here, we have uh, the from clause from the prior query. Um, we have our database name, our schema name, and our address name, or, or I'm sorry, our table name, uh, which is named address. Um, and you'll see that you navigate down the hierarchy with a period. So this, this, uh, this syntactical element here, it's just a period. Um, so it's telling you within the AdventureWorks 2017 database period, go to the person schema period, and then go to the, the address table period. And you can also navigate up the hierarchy. The address table is within the person schema within the AdventureWorks 2017 database. Um, and so the, the reference that we have here, right, with the database, the schema, and the table all explicitly included in the table source um, is fully qualified because it contains basically the full path to the table. I know technically it doesn't contain the server name, right, um, which is ultimately only going to be required when you're working across multiple servers. Um, and so you're querying a table within another server. Um, you ultimately need to provide that server name in addition to the database name, the schema name, and the table name. Um, this is, you know, linking across or querying across servers is pretty inefficient, but there are, um, I, I mean, I've encountered it in, in practice where you actually need to do this. Um, so, it, you know, just high level that's that, that it's out there, but you're, you know, from now on, we're not really going to talk about the server name uh, in the context of a table source. Uh, moving on. Um, 
So one of the questions, right, we had we had a fully qualified table reference here. Uh, in practice, you might encounter, you know, when you go to, to, to uh, if you're working somewhere and then you get some SQL script, you might not see a fully qualified table reference. Um, and that's because you don't need to qualify it if you do one or two or uh, well, you can do some combination of these things. Uh, but you can avoid qualifying the table source by um, selecting the database in the dropdown within SQL Server Management Studio. Um, I don't I don't like or recommend this method um, because ultimately, if you're doing this and then you build a SQL script after that um, that doesn't include the database uh, name. Um, and you're working in an environment that has multiple databases on a server, um, that query isn't, you're not just gonna be able to open it and run it. You're going to have to also manually go find the database that contains those tables, et cetera. And so it can be a little bit, um, I, I call it annoying. Um, and that's why I don't, I ultimately don't recommend this method because I, I don't find it to be you know, very efficient. The most efficient way, uh, if you're using a single database within an entire script, and there are instances, um, I mean, in the real world, um, outside of this, outside of this course, where you're querying multiple tables across multiple databases, in which case this this method isn't really useful either, um, and in which case you should really use fully qualified uh, table sources. Um, but if your script is in a single database, which it will be for this entire course, so I, I recommend or, or encourage you to use this method because it ultimately saves you some, some typing here, um, you can use the use uh, statement or the use keyword. Um, so in the, in the query on the left, we tell SQL uh, use the AdventureWorks 2019 database. So it basically establishes the default database for any queries that you run subsequent to that. Um, and you'll see, uh, you know, then then you have your query uh, after that. Select top ten star from person dot address. You'll notice we drop the database uh, uh, reference from the table source because you'll no longer need it. Um, and let's hop over before I talk about schemas, which will be the last slide. Let's hop over to SQL Server Management Studio uh, so that we can see this uh, kind of in practice, right? Uh, with these two examples. Well, this is going to be another example that I'll cover in a minute. Um, so you'll see in the uh, in the uh, the drop down menu for the uh, available databases, uh, you have the master database uh, selected, uh, which is really just tied to the to the to the server. Um, the AdventureWorks 2019 database, you can see, you can select it here from the drop down. In which case, after you do that, let's go back to master for a second um, and just try to run this query, right? We don't have AdventureWorks 2019. We haven't, uh, in the drop down, we haven't used the use keyword. So let's just try to run that query, right? And we get a syntax error uh, telling us that we have an invalid object name. And essentially, SQL is telling us, well, I can't find that object. Well, that's because it's ultimately looking in the master database. Um, so if we were to select the AdventureWorks 2019 database from the dropdown, hit execute, right? Then we can see that we get our, uh, the, the query execute successfully returns the first 10 records for all fields from the address table. Um, like I said, this is not the preferred method because if you encounter a script that doesn't include this at the top, right, I, I'm gonna have to remember or find, you know, where is this person that address table? And you might have 10, 15 uh, uh, databases over here in your object explorer, which is the kind of the, the environment that I that I work in. Um, and so you have to find, uh, well, would, you know, which database is that in again? Um, and so I, I think that's, that's kind of, the, the, the way to avoid that or the way to be kinder um, to your to your peers and also to yourself is to include the use um, the use statement. And so here, uh, let me revert this back right uh, to master. So this is by default what will display up here. If I run this, you'll notice that uh, the command is completed successfully. Um, but you'll also notice that this um, 
in the dropdown that VentureWorks 2019 is displayed. And so this is the code that basically accomplishes the actual point and click of selecting it from the database. So this is a lot uh, more preferred because when you pass this, this code off to someone, it tells them where the database is uh, that, or where the, the, the database where the table is. Um, and so once I do that, right, I can run this query and it uh, and it returns the records just fine. Uh, so feel free again to use this um, use keyword, use statement in your in your code throughout this course because it's going and I'm going to default to this method as well um, because there will be you know students who are using different versions and all you got to do is change you know change that version. Uh, in, in one place in your code, and you don't have to change every every uh, every database reference within the within your script. Um, so heading back to the, I'll change that back. The squiggly red squiggly lines alerted me that there was a syntax error. Um, essentially, that if I were to run that, SQL would 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 uh, return an error. So let me go back to the the PowerPoint. All right, and then we'll talk about this thing uh, that I introduced a, a couple a couple of minutes ago uh, called a schema. Um, and a database uh, ultimately can have one or, or more schemas. Uh, and in this particular uh, code example in the top right, person is the name of the schema in which the address table is located. And so a schema is a collection of database objects. It doesn't have to just be a table, um, but it can also be stored procedures, functions, etc. Um, and schemas ultimately provide a way to organize objects uh, within a database. And also, I, I think the you know the, 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 that's an important point. But one of the other important points is to ultimately control the way users interact with these collections of objects or something called access management, right? So you might have uh, you might have one group of of, of people on it on a team working with. Um, working with one kind of data from uh, from a, a particular product that your business offers and then another team doing something that is a completely independent product, right? And you don't want necessarily uh, one team manipulating or potentially corrupting or destroying the data, data from another team. And so you can establish essentially roles based on these schemas. So group one only has access to the one schema, group two only has access to the other schema. And this kind of... Um, you know, user control access management is ultimately a database administrator or DBA function. Um, so it's, you're unlikely to, unless you become a DBA or, or working in that capacity, um, but more for an analyst, you you have a DBA that you would reach out to and say, hey, I need I need access to this schema um, or this table, and then they would figure out the schema or the database that you need access to. And that DBA may ultimately grant you read access, which just allows you to query the tables but not update alter or manipulate them um, you might be given right access in which case you can create tables within that schema you can also um, I, i'm sure this can all be managed at various levels but you might also be be uh, enabled to uh, you know change the ultimate data that that's already on the database uh, or part of that schema um, so that that's really the the, the idea or the the uh, the purpose of the schema is organizing you know various objects on a database and then controlling uh, which users and and to what extent they have access. Uh, the default schema is the DBO schema, uh, which stands for database owner, um, and it's used to varying degrees depending on you know what what environment you you go into. Um, some you'll see in the VentureWorks database they they treat it as a true DBO schema, which um, is uh, you know reserved for uh, just just kind of more database management functions, not actually storing data. Whereas in the real world, you might encounter you know all your tables might be on the default DBO schema. If a schema isn't supplied, uh, the default uh, is uh, will be assumed. So the default DB is DBO, uh, and so it'll be assumed that SQL. It, when you don't explicitly provide it, SQL will assume that that you're referring to the DBO schema. So let's kick over to uh, SQL Server Management Studio to to look at this in more detail. Um, and you'll see we already have the AdventureWorks 2019 database here. If we expand the node, uh, the database node, AdventureWorks 2019, and expand the tables node, you'll see 
ultimately, uh, let me just pull this and uh, I don't know how this works. We'll just keep it floating. Um, and I'm sorry. <laughs> One of the most frustrating things about <laughs> SQL Server Management Studio, I've been working in it in years and I can never, I mean, you can figure out what this various, what these various, uh, you know, how you're freezing the panes to the right or to the left. Um, but um, it's always kind of frustrating to me, even still. Um, it's not very user friendly. But anyway, I was saying in the Object Explorer, when we've expanded the tables node under the AdventureWorks 2019 database, we can see uh, that the, the AdventureWorks 2019 database has several schemas. Uh, the DBO is listed first, just alphabetically, but this is the default schema. And you'll see there's only three tables here, really not any uh, big data, right? We could select our top 1,000 rows. There's really no kind of uh, you'll see various information, um, really no data data, right? Um, this is just all tied to the database management uh, or management of the database. Um, and so you'll see here, we've got a human resources schema, we've got a person schema, and that's ultimately where I'm, I'm querying this, uh, using this table as an example. We've got a production schema, a sales schema, and so on and so forth. Um, and you can see like in this particular, the AdventureWorks kind of framework or, or um, kind of the, the way that they've set this up is th that they do it by department. So human resources might have some tables. A person I think might ultimately, I'm, I'm not sure how they, they work this into the example, but I think that might be customer level information or data. Uh, you have your production, uh, which is more about your product kind of stuff. You have a sales, right? Um, so that's how they how they ultimately organize their database. And your your um, your company or, or whatever that, that you, wherever you work and, and their data is ultimately going to be organized in a certain way. So this was by a function. You know that's how the AdventureWorks is structured. Mine uh, it typically, I mean, for the most part, is is. Uh, is product level. It's also they got some function. Uh, it's kind of like a business function type of databases as well, uh, databases and schemas. And so I'm going to move this object explorer back to the left pane and collapse it. Uh, but ultimately, what I wanted to point out here is your DBO schema is your default schema. And so if we delete this. Right, you can see the AdventureWorks 2019 is still our, our database here. And so if we don't supply the DBO, the schema reference in the table source here, uh, this is gonna work perfectly fine, right? If we want uh, to supply the person schema in the address table, you'll see that SQL will return an error because there is no table uh, address, there is no address table in the DBO schema. One other kind of way that you might see the DBO skipped um, or like not supplied uh, so that SQL uses it or assumes a default is if you're using a uh, if you're using an actual table, a fully qualified table source. And note that I provide two periods there um, and I skip the database or the I'm sorry, the schema reference. Um, it, if you hover over this, you can automatically see that SQL is assuming the DBO, uh, the DBO schema here. And so this query will run without issue. Um, this table is ultimately empty. Um, you could do something like uh, AW. And you can see that there's also IntelliSense. So you could, uh, you know, select uh, SQL tries to predict what you're, what you're, uh, what you're going to supply as a value. Um, and you can see that that worked without issue. Um, again, if I were to do the address, right, uh, table here, uh, it's going to return that error um, because there is no address table in, um, in the DBO schema. Um, a quick note on IntelliSense too, you could also, I, I did see an option right here, you can turn it off if, if you find that annoying. Um, sometimes I do. Uh, but that's that's essentially the, the from clause um, within a SQL query. Uh, and so just to recap, we covered uh, what the table source, let's just, uh, let me pull this back up. We covered, you know, what, what is the from clause used for? Uh, what is uh, the the table source? You know, what are the various elements in the table source? Um, we talked through uh, 
qualifying your table source and when and how to avoid it. Um, and then also we we walk through you know what is what is a schema and how does that fit within within a database.